What's up? What's up, everybody? And welcome to the stream. I'm your host, Jesse Showalter. Thanks for joining me here on the channel and on the live stream today. Today, we're talking about soft skills for creative, soft skills for designers. What are soft skills? Well, they're anything other than your normal design skill, right? Soft skills are the things that are commonly undervalued. We're going to talk about what those things are today because you need to start overvaluing those things. Hello to everybody joining me in the chat. Arunava and Mind and Abernails in the in the house is in the chat. We've got Kunal is in the chat as well as Megan who was the first one here minutes before it all started. Megan was in the house. Hey, let me know where you're coming from and let me know what is your biggest question? What is your biggest question when it comes to skill set, right? The skill set that you need, the skills that you have. Uh, oh, yeah, all sorts of people jumped in the chat. And tell me where you're coming from as well. Where in the world are you coming from and where are you viewing this? I got people who are viewing this right now on YouTube, some on Twitch, some on Behance, some on Facebook. So welcome, welcome, welcome to the stream. Actually going to be a lot of fun today. So uh, I have some exciting news also at the end of the stream so stick around for that and if you'd like to get your portfolio reviewed then all you have to do is go to instagram follow me there i'll put the link in the chat and follow me on instagram and dm me your link uh or to your portfolio or your piece of work and we'll try to get your work featured right here on the stream today really really excited the new adobe xd challenge mentor is miss elise todd oh yeah elise elisa todd is super talented uh, super awesome. I kind of want to have her on my channel because she's just kind of crushing the game right now. So, um, all right, people DMing me stuff, people coming in from the UK. Uh, Arunava's biggest question is how can I improve my skills and how to acquire new ones? Ooh, we're going to talk about that. That's great. That's awesome. Um, I did a little a fun hangout chat last night, casual cruising, looking for inspiration. We also looked at job applications or excuse me job descriptions on behance and dribble so we're going through the job boards and seeing what people are hiring for um so that was a lot of fun so join me and we're starting to do some thursday night streams on all platforms and they're more they're less structured they're a little bit more chill um and also if you're interested uh and you want to join me next week next week we are having a members only uh, video conference call. We had one last week. It was a huge success. It was a ton of fun. So if you're not a YouTube member already, just go to YouTube, hit that little blue join button, become an insider or a supporter, and you will be invited in the community tab on YouTube to our very next, which will be next weekend or next Friday, right after this live stream, we'll be having another members only video chat, a video call where I give mentorship, I answer questions. It's actually a lot of fun. We did a lot of, uh, we did, we finished our live chat with a role play between myself and one of my members. So uh, I just role played the client and gave him some tough questions and helped him kind of prepare for his, ne his next client meeting. It's a lot of fun. So join us for that one. If you're not a member, become a member. But with all that being said, let's jump over and take a look at wow 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 something's not right with my screen so let's check that again see if we can get my screen to work i've been having some technical issues with my screen but that's all right we can figure things out we can make things happen can't we yes we can maybe 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 not i don't know um okay well i mean we are talking about soft skills so let's do this while i'm figuring out my little technical issues here why don't we do a quick little Question and answer time with Jesse. Zuhaib says, how important are communication skills for designers? Communication skills for designers are of utmost importance. It's actually part of our soft skills today that we're gonna be taking a look at. So um, they are super duper important. And we wanna make sure that we have those communication skills because here's the thing, and we're gonna talk more about this once I get my, my, my tech all figured out. Um, but you can't, you can't just be a good designer. It's just not enough anymore, right? It, and it's not about, it's not about you being a good designer. It's about, whoop, whoop, whoop. It's about you being a good person. You having skill sets that improve the lives of teams, right? That's really what it's all about. So uh, keep that in mind. Very, very important stuff. Let's, we're figuring out some technical issues. Wow, okay. I don't think... I'm gonna be able to get my screen to work, which is a real, real shame. So, hmm, yep, I have an idea. I'm gonna be doing a couple of things here. 
I'm gonna be doing a couple things in the background while I figure this out, because that is just such a bummer. Goodness. Um, all right, technical issues. We will, we will soldier on. We will soldier on, okay? Um, so again, yeah, let's talk communication. Yes, it is very, very important. Communication is very important, which hopefully you'll see here in a minute. But we're, today we're gonna be talking about these five things. Communication, critical thinking, leadership, teamwork, and personal management, okay? So these are all crucial soft skills um, that you're gonna wanna have, okay? So I'm just gonna do something real quick. Boy, stay with me, everybody. You guys are being awesome. And I just need to, I just need to figure a few things out here. New folder, boom, ba boom, ba boom, 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 boom. Let's just figure out our technical difficulties. All right. Um, <laughs> yikes, this is not going the way I wanted it to go. Okay, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of work here. Let's, yeah, okay. We're actually gonna transition over here. I gotta put a new scene in real quick. Ugh. Let's go image, boom. You guys are gonna have to stay with me here just for two seconds as I figure something out, okay? Um, almost there, almost there. Yep, and bingo, okay. Let's, let's try this, okay? Oh my goodness. Right again. Okay. Oh my gosh, we got something to work. Okay. Let's let's just talk about let's talk about communication finally. And thank you all for bearing with me while I get my technical difficulties figured out. Let's talk about communication because that was actually the first slide that we wanted to talk about, okay? So here are a couple ideas about communication or a couple micro skills in the area of communication because you can't just say communication. You have to be able to understand a little bit more what that means. We're talking about presentation skills. We're talking about confidence. We're talking about mutual respect and empathy, active listening, verbal communication, uh, nonverbal communication, okay? Written communication, constructive feedback, and friendliness. Okay, so let's talk about a few of these things. Um, if you're gonna work for a company and you have to have these communication skills, it is imperative that you have these communication skills. Let's talk about that first one. Uh, uh, and let's, let's actually skip presentation skills because that's actually a byproduct of some of the others. Let's talk about confidence and mutual respect really quickly, okay? Um, to be a good communicator, you have to first be confident of what it is you're about to communicate, okay? So know what you're about to say. I actually have a slide later on that'll say, think first, speak second, okay? So spend the time thinking through issues so that when you communicate, you communicate in a more clear way, okay? And then as you're doing that, have a mutual respect for other people. I'm reading a book right now and the title of one of the chapters is, consider that other people might know what they're talking about right? That maybe, that maybe I am not the end all be all on the matter, but maybe they, they could be right and I could be wrong. So I'm going to have a mutual respect for everything that this person says, not just the things that I'm thinking. I'm not going to wait for my turn to talk. I'm going to actively, ready? Check it out. I'm going to actively listen. That's important. I'm going to actively listen to you, okay? And then we have to work on our verbal and nonverbal communication, okay? So keep this in mind. If you... <laughs> If you don't know what you sound like or look like when you are communicating, I, I would recommend filming yourself. Next time um, you are having like a Zoom chat or you're having a conversation, ask a friend, a spouse, a loved one, a family member, if you can just post a phone up right here and, and film yourself, right? What are the little things that you do? What are your hand gestures, your body language? Do you roll your eyes when you speak to people, when you disagree with them? Do you look people in the eye? This is part of nonverbal communication, right? Or when people are talking to you, do you wander off to the side? All of these things are part of communication and nonverbal communication, and they're important. They make people feel valued. And these, this is a skill that, that you and me should have in the workplace because I had a slide that talked about it and I, and I wasn't able to make it happen for some reason, but, um, Leadership, or excuse me, uh, um, um, leaders, it's Vince Lombardi's favorite quote, is leaders are not made, they're, they're made, they're not born, right? They're made by effort 
and it's the price that we have to pay to achieve any goal. So, right, what's your goal? Is your goal to be effective in the workplace, to be a, like an entrepreneur, to be a good team member, to be hireable, to be desirable in the marketplace? Well, then communication is gonna be one of those key things for you. Let's talk about a few more things that are hard here. Um, let's, let's talk about uh, how constructive feedback and friendliness and written communication are probably one of the hardest things, one of the hardest parts about communication itself, okay? So um, written communication, this means you and me writing emails, writing presentations, right? Writing in Slack, we have to be professional, get to the point, be succinct, that's really, really important, but also learn how to give and take constructive feedback, right? Do you know how to take constructive feedback? If somebody doesn't agree with your point of view, if somebody doesn't agree with your design decision, do you know how to take that feedback? Do you know how to ask for proper feedback and give it? Ooh, ooh, ooh. these are important things. So we should be able to ask and receive it well and say, that's interesting. Why do you think that? Tell me more. I'd love to get to the bottom of this. I'd love to make the product or the design better. Know how to offer things that are not built on your own desires and your own pride. Don't be intimidated by other people doing well, right? But instead, offer constructive criticism, offer praise when something is really good. I almost just tip my microphone over, right? So, and be friendly, okay? So that's that's the first thing that I would say about, uh, about yeah, soft skills. That first soft skill is gonna be communication, okay? Let's move on to the second soft skill and see if I can actually get my get my computer working here. But second skill that we need to really be worrying about is critical thinking. But before we do that, let's head over and do a little bit of question and answer time. Because Mamesh had a great question, which is how do you develop and polish these skills as you grow as a designer? See, so many, that's a great question. Because so many of us are busy honing our craft of design, right? You're doing the thing you should be doing, which is opening up design software every day, following along with design challenges, watching streams like this, right? Learning and growing. But also there's the personal development side of things that you, you need to start figuring out what your weaknesses are and then trying to find places or opportunities or things that can help you own that weakness. And so if you have a lot of trouble with uh, active listening, you need to read a book about active listening, right? If you don't know that you have a problem with active listening, you're like, how do I know what to develop? Ask people around you, hey, am I a good communicator? Here's this list that this guy on, on YouTube, Jesse, poured out, right? Confidence, mutual respect, empathy. Can you tell me which of these things I'm good at and I'm not good at? Ask your best friends, ask your mom and your dad, ask your coworkers, tell them to rate you on each one of these things, one to five, but say, just say, hey, do me a favor, or not even rate me, just check off the ones that you think I'm good at and put an X next to the ones you think that I'm less good at. I'm open to the feedback and critique. You do that and people will be honest with you. And then you say, okay, great, ask some questions. Why do you think that? What have I done? Okay, I wanna grow in these areas. And then find resources and start reading and learning and watching about what those things are, right? What is nonverbal communication? Maybe you need to read those things, right? Maybe you have you have really bad, we'll talk about later, time management. You need to read a book about time management and you need to put some things in place in your life. These are things that need to, you're honing your own self. You're honing your heart as well as your craft, okay? It's important. So that's a great question. Um, Saral says, I recently got a job as an in-house product designer for a startup and I'd like to thank you for this. After your feedback, I edited my portfolio, repositioned myself and got my first full-time job. Oh, that's amazing. Reposition, fix the portfolio, push yourself, progress, land that job. Can we all just throw some high fives and some emojis and some awesome hands up emojis for Saral in the chat for scoring his first job? I'm so glad. I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited you landed your first full-time position. That's what this whole thing is about, right? Is That's what this whole channel is about. That's what these whole streams are about is helping people grow in their craft, grow in their skill set, land those jobs. I want you to love what you do. So that's, man, that's so exciting. Come on, throw some love in the chat, all right? All right, so let's go back. Let's talk about our next 
uh, our next skill, our next soft skill, okay? And these are, you know what? We say these are soft skills for creators, but these are just soft skills for people. These are, these are heavy skills, actually, for all people, okay? The next one is critical thinking. Let's talk about critical thinking a little bit. What does critical thinking mean, right? Well, it means to be adaptable, okay? It means to be creative, and it means you have critical observation. This is the first three I would say. Let's talk about those really, really quickly, okay? Um, can you adapt and overcome? Can you think about a topic or a problem creatively? And can you observe critically what the things are about that issue that don't actually, that's not what you think, it's what makes the most sense for the process or for the problem. Okay, here's what I mean. Can you think about something in a way where you take your own opinions and thoughts out of it and just say, what would be the best, what would be the best situation or scenario for this problem? What would be the best solution? Not my solution, but the best solution. See, critical thinking a lot of times is about exiting yourself out of the process and trying to figure out maybe you're not the best for this, maybe you're not the best solution. Maybe you're not the best solution for the problem. Maybe somebody else is, but you have to remove yourself out. You have to suck it up, right? You know, put aside your pride and you need to figure out things critically. I might not be the best. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe somebody else is right for this. Okay, that's critical, part of critical observation. Let's let's talk about flexibility and innovation and a desire to learn. Again, this is all critical thinking. Here's, here's When you think about something critically, what you're actually doing is you're saying, you know, I need to approach this um, like I don't have it all put together. Like I don't, you're, I don't have it all figured out already. And since I don't have it figured out already, let me readdress this. See, a lot of people, most of us, I would say on a daily basis, we wanna take past experience and we want to apply it to future circumstances, always. And sometimes that's okay. Sometimes that's right. Sometimes we can lower you know, the need for cognitive functionality by doing that. All of us do, we create habits, that's great. See, for instance, here's what I'm talking about. Um, when I'm hungry, I don't have to reprocess why am I hungry and what should I do next? I go, I haven't eaten for a while, so therefore I need to eat, I'm gonna go get some food. That's a cognitive mapped habit and it's looped in my mind and that's fine, okay? But when we approach a new problem, like why aren't people downloading this app? What we shouldn't say is, well, I know why, because this is what happened in the past. We're not thinking about it critically, we're thinking about it experientially, right? That may work sometimes, but to be a critical thinker, you have to say, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people aren't downloading this app, Maybe people aren't converting through this funnel. Maybe people aren't reading this design the right way because I need to do it a new way because all my my experience is not working for this new thing. That's thinking about things critically and not experientially. That allows you to problem solve and be resourceful. It allows you to think outside of the box. You're not stuck in the habit of saying, well, I'm sure that I'm right about this and I'm sure it's gonna happen the same way that it happened last time. Maybe not, maybe it won't. That's what I'm saying. So when we think critically, we leave our preconceived notions at the door and we start to think about the problem again, almost like, almost with a childlike thought process that says, let's readdress this from the ground up. Sometimes it's okay to readdress things from the ground up. This will allow you to troubleshoot and be willing to learn, have a desire to learn, have a desire to be effective, okay? So that's what I would say there. Let's move on. Let's go to our third slide. I'm literally having to change these slides out in my live streaming software because my laptop is not working. Honestly, I'm, I might not be able to do portfolio reviews because I think I'm having some technical difficulty with my software somehow. So sorry about that. Again, congrats to Saral for, be, uh, for getting his first full-time job. And uh, man, thank you guys so much for joining the stream today. I'm gonna take a quick sip of my legend spicy nootropic performance drink helps me think helps my mind think because it's nootropics it's got ginger and spice and all sorts of good stuff in there mm. and it wets my whistle and lets me know that i can keep on going all right let's talk about the third thing we got we got a few more here's another soft skill leadership okay leadership skills and capabilities i'll tell you i i i agree with vince lombardi there's no such thing as a naturally born leader 
It's some leaders are made. Leaders are formed. Okay. And here's some of those skills. And here, and, and, oh, sorry, let's go back. Here's what I'm talking about leadership because all of us at, at, in our careers are, should, should want to, could have the possibility of rising up, right? Whether you're freelancing, you're working as a full house, like a full time in house designer like Saral, whether you're working for a large company or a startup, you should want to grow, right? As a human being, as an individual, as a creative, you should want to grow. And I'm gonna tell you something you can only grow so much as a creative, right? You can learn new skills to add to that stack of being a designer. Earlier, somebody asked me, what is a full stack designer? It's having multiple skills that kind of move into a stack, but you can only grow so much. You can only work in Illustrator so much until you're just repeating things and you're redoing the same creative process. Yes, you can grow to some extent, I'm not saying, but the sky is not actually the limit in my opinion. Here's where the sky becomes the limit. When you say, okay, I am a creative and the thing that is, there's no limit to is how much of a leader I can become, right? How, how much effect can I have on the world around me depends not on what I can do with my time, but how I can empower other people and what they can do with their time and their skills. That's leadership. Leadership is saying, I know that my, me, myself can do this much work, but if I inspire, motivate, empower, encourage others around me, 12 people around me, that they are going to do more. If, if, I, if you're not religious, that was Jesus's whole take on life. It was not addition, what I can add, add, add to the world. It was multiplication. That's why he poured into his disciples, right? He poured into his disciples. And they poured into their disciples and it multiplies out from there. It's the same thing. That's what leadership looks like. I believe the example comes from Jesus. You can think it comes from somewhere else. That's fine. But leadership is always multiplication and the empowerment of people, not the elevation of self. That's what leadership is. Okay. And so here's some of the micro skill sets that come in this soft skill of leadership. Conflict resolution. Being able to resolve things because there's going to be conflict. People are going to disagree. How do you help people troubleshoot that critically thinking as a leader? Okay. How do you give people a voice? How do you give people the floor? Right. How do you make decisions? Right. So what is a, what does decision making look like to you? And what is delegation? These are three big ones, resolving conflict, making decisions and delegating things. Now, let's talk about delegation. Cause that's a huge one. Uh, conflict resolution. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think that's a big one, but decision-making and delegation. Here's my take on decision-making and delegation. Um, we don't make decisions again, cause we're critical thinkers. We don't make decisions based on what we think is right. We make decisions based on what serves the purpose or serves best. Right. And so, um, a lot of times as a leader, um, I, I don't make the decision for myself. Okay. Um, I, I bring ideas to the table. I empower other people to think about those ideas, to come up with better ideas, and I assemble the team. I think it's uh, Jack Ma, who's like the Chinese like billionaire, the start of, he's the founder of, uh, oh gosh, what is the, the I don't know, there's some something he founded. The same thing with like Jeff Bezos, any like successful person, what they do is they bring people around them that are smarter than them. They bring people around them that are more talented to, than them. Why are they a leader? Because they're the per people that figure out how to bring people together. Elon Musk did not personally program the rockets to go to Mars or the moon. He's not doing that himself. He's bringing together talented people and he's organizing them, leading them, motivating them, encouraging them, structuring them, resolving conflict between them, putting ideas on the table, right? Demanding, not demanding, but, but knowing that they're gonna have better ideas than him, this is leadership, okay? And this is what we should all strive towards. Um, let's talk about facilitation. That's part of delegation and facilitation, giving clear, feedback. We already talked about that. Inspiring people, management. I put people and convos, conversations, right? Managing people and managing conversations. This is last night in my stream. I was looking at uh, job descriptions and anything that was a senior level position required you to be able to manage yourself and manage other people. See, junior, uh, I'll be really honest. Last night we were looking at job descriptions. Junior level positions are asking way too much. They were like, we're looking for a junior designer who has one to three years of experience, knows 75 different <laughs> design, design programs, has blah, blah, blah. They were basically designing, they were asking or describing somebody who's been in the industry for a really long time. It was dumb. It was really unfair of them. 
But I think rightly so, the senior design positions, we're talking to people who are able to manage their own time well, and not only themselves, but other people. They're able to manage people, they're able to manage conversations, they're able to manage difficult situations, they're able to manage things. And all management means, right, is that you're able to take things, maintain them, make them function properly, right? And so it's it's this is part of the leadership skills, right? Is part of it's managing people and conversations, right? Um, I I facilitate conversations quite often um, between people, and one of the things that I do is um, I need to I always say it's like passing an invisible ball, right? You want to facilitate a great conversation, you want to manage people well. What you have in your mind is a goal, right? It's like Inception a little bit. You're like I want to get people to this place as we're having this conversation, but I don't want to tell them. That's not leadership, right? Leadership is inception. Leadership is posing questions and stirring up insightful conversation to lead them to the place. And you're just kind of guiding it and correcting it, but you're passing an invisible ball. So I'm saying, I have this question. What do you think about it? And I pass the ball around the table. If somebody holds on to that ball a little too long, I say, you know what? That's really interesting. I, I would love to hear what this person has to say. And you pass the invisible ball to them. And on and on we go. We're passing this invisible ball around. We're facilitating conversation. We're empowering and managing people. We're asking everybody to give their feedback. And if people aren't going the direction you know they need to go, as a leader, as a manager, I manage. I say, you know what, that's interesting. I'd love to, I would love to hear your feedback less on this and more on this. But it takes somebody that has insight, forward thought, right? And, and the ability to lovingly kind of lead people lead people well okay um here's another one project management i feel like goes into that but empowerment and motivation these are things as well see we can't just be doers and we can't just be people who ask people to be doers we all we also need to be people who encourage people and motivate them and inspire them this is part of being a leader you know what and, and here's what the first problem that comes to mind with this thing of being empowering and motivating and being a leader is so many of us don't feel worthy. I don't feel worthy to be a leader. Okay. And that's okay. None of us feel worthy. None of us are ready. None of us. Right. But by just, we, we're all called to do it. We're all called to lead people. Human, human life will flourish. If more people stand up and lead well, life will flourish. But we all feel like we're undeserving of that position. That's that's something that happens in the back of my mind. Like, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve to be leading this team or these people. I don't deserve to have the YouTube channel. I don't deserve to have so many of you watching this live stream. I'm undeserving. Who am I to talk and share? But you know what? At some point, I need to get over myself and realize that I have, I'm not the fount of all knowledge. I maybe am a fount of just a, a couple of droplets of water though. A little teeny tiny bit and maybe my droplets of water are something that you don't have and i want to share those with you it's a general desire to help people to empower people and to encourage people you know it makes me really really excited that soral came in the chat and said you know he followed my advice he watched the streams he took some constructive criticism and feedback he tweaked a few things and he landed his first position that's that's humbling to me but you know what i, I i'm proud to be a part of soral's journey I'm proud to be a part of his story. I'm proud that I could offer anything of value that helped him to improve his life and make his life flourish. You can do the same. You hear that? You can do the same thing. You can help other people on their journey while helping your own journey. You, you can empower other people, encourage other people, inspire other people, and you have gifts and you have skills that you can use that were given to you by God that you can use to benefit other people and to help human life flourish. You can do it. It's you. And it's not just me. And if you're in the if you're in the chat going, no, it's not me. Yes, it is. It's you. Believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, I believe in you, right? And by believing in other people, you will create leaders out of them. That's my last, that's my last hot take on leadership. But we're all called to be leaders. All right. So we had some questions in the chat. So we're gonna get to that question. But first, let's say next up, we're gonna be talking about teamwork because before you can be a leader, you do have to be a good team member. But let's take some questions. All right, <clears throat> sorry, I had to take a sip of my drink real quick. We had somebody asking about uh, questions about books to read about leadership. There's, there's a couple books that I would recommend reading. 
about leadership. Um, there is a book just called Leadership by Max Lucado. That's a great book. There's a book called The Power of Habit. I think good leaders have strong habits. That's by Charles Duhigg. Um, and it's all about forming habits and overcoming poor habits and instilling healthy habits in your life. Oh, a great book if you wanna be inspired about leadership. Um, and about soft skills is uh, Tools for Titans or Tribe of Mentors by Tim Ferriss. And it's not as much a book you read from front to end, front to back, but it's more of like a daily thing that you can open up and read a page and see how entrepreneurs, successful people, athletes, how they structure their day. That's another big one as well. What's another one? Um, mm, yeah, I think uh, that that's all the recommendations I have in my mind right now, okay? Um, Tomomi, uh, oh, Tomomi is in the chat. She's one of my, she's one of my YouTube members. She's back. How do you show slash present that you have these soft skills during interviews or job search processes? That's a great question. Okay. Yes. So how do you present or demonstrate that you have these soft skills? Okay. Um, here's a few things that I would say. I think that you can actually build these in to your case studies or your portfolio pieces. I think that soft skills should be mentioned, right? If you're trying to move out of the realm of junior designer and into more, you know, design positions, like high ranking, move up to senior stuff, then your case studies should start demonstrating how you led teams, uh, how you critically thought about an issue. So you can even, okay, you can even take these items like critical thinking and conflict resolution, decision-making, delegation. Take these, these words that we've listed so far, go back in the stream and, and kind of take them and list them out. And what you could do is make sure that you're using some of that verbiage and then prove how you did that thing. So for instance, let's say it was critical thinking. Let's say you have a website project that you were part of and you were part of a team. And you can say not only, hey, here's the color palette, here's the this, here's the that. You can say critical thinking. And then underneath that, have a section that says, we had some preconceived notions that this is what was happening. This was, was this is what was wrong. By the power of critical thinking and research, here's what we actually found out. You're showing that you're a critical thinker. You're demonstrating that thought process and you're putting it in your case study. You can do the same thing. Delegation, facilitation. Hey, I facilitated some user research. I delegated things and I led a team of five to finish this app and lead this project all the way through. I was part of that leadership team, you know, and and so I'm not saying use bud, buzzwords, but you can include these things in your case studies. Number two, uh, ooh, Atomic Habits, Jan, Jan said. Yeah, that's a great book, actually. Uh, I've only read the, a few chapters of that. I have to finish it, but I've heard it's really, really, the rest of it's really, really good. So I put it down. I, get, I need to pick it back up. Um, so, but also while you're interviewing, um, while you're talking to people, especially in interviews, this lingo, this and and again, I'm not I'm not trying to teach you a way to to fake your way through an interview. I'm saying do the thought work in the background, right? Be be perfecting these soft skills so that when you get into the interview, you can talk about them confidently. Use your communication skills confidently. Look them in the eye. Talk about delegation. Talk about com like conflict resolution. Talk about time management. You can speak about these things effectively. If somebody says, "How do you manage your time?" and you go. I'm just really, really good at it. You haven't done the thought work then. <laughs> you haven't done the thought work then, right? And you haven't probably put in the time to personally grow as a, as a human being on how to manage your time. You might say, hey, you know what I've realized is that, um, you know, when I'm managing my time, one of the, one of the biggest uh, maybe distractions for me is notifications. So when I'm managing my time, I time block parts of the day that I answer emails and then I turn off notifications for certain hours of the day so I can have large swaths of creative time and then I check back in. So I manage my time in time blocks. I use this application like time management, time tracking, whatever. Um, and, I, and I manage all the things that I do. Now you have a process. See how you put the thought work in. So I would say, put it in your case studies, demonstrate it there, talk about it, and then put the thought work in. And then when you're speaking, speak confidently about the ways that you've grown and progressed and the systems that you have in place. That's a great, great question. Okay, wow. Um, okay, do we have any other questions? If not, that has been question and answer time. All right, let's jump back into teamwork wow that's not working let's jump back into teamwork and then um talk about this is the fourth out of fifth point here 
for team or for uh, soft skills. And again, these soft skills are, in my opinion, a huge, huge deal. Okay, they are, they are, in my opinion, half of the pie. If you looked at a pie chart, they are not just a small portion of the pie of you getting hired or getting jobs, but they are a bigger portion of the pie than you think they actually would be. And a big one is teamwork. Why? Because the majority of us are gonna get hired and work on teams. Even if you're a freelancer, sorry to tell you, you're probably gonna work on a team. You're, pro <laughs> you're probably going to work with other people. It's real important, okay? So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Um, so let's talk about this teamwork, okay? Um, you need, we already talked about this. You need to be able to accept feedback, but you need to be able to collaborate, right? What, here's what this means. You need to be able to accept feedback, work in a team and make, make just, you know, maybe change your idea of what's the perfect and right thing. So, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Make compromises. You're going to have to learn how to compromise and play well with others, right? A lot of us don't do that well. Even if you're freelancing, technically you're working in a team. Your team member is your client. Um, <laughs> your team member, your client or your team members or your bosses, they want something. They have ideas too. And you need to learn how to bring those in, manage them well, and make compromises to what you think is good. Here's, here's the trademark of a junior designer, okay? The trademark of a junior designer is a designer that's so passionate about the design decisions that they've made that they get emotionally kind of like out of control about people trying to change their designs. Why are they always trying to change my designs? They don't realize how much I worked on this color palette. This is perfect. That's the trademark of a junior designer who does not have control over their emotions. They don't know how to work in a team. They think that they are right always, right? And they don't know how to collaborate. They don't have the emotional intelligence, right? To listen to other people and think to themselves, they could be right, that could be a good idea. Maybe maybe I can integrate that. And Or, you know, to speak clearly and communicate clearly as to why they think maybe that's not the right, but at the end of the day, realize that it takes a tribe, right? It takes a team usually to put products out and you can't do it on your own. Right? So you don't get the end all, you're not the end all be all and you don't always get final say and that's okay, okay? Um, in doing so, you have empathy for other people. We could talk about that forever, but you, you also need to learn how to establish interpersonal relationships. Oh, not a soft skill talked about very often. Establishing interpersonal relationships. That means that you're creating relationships with other people for the good of the team right? That means just because somebody else's personality is different than yours, doesn't matter. It's a difficult personality, a personality different from yours, doesn't matter. You learn how to establish relationships with those people. You learn topics that you can talk about with them, how to get along with them. It's, it's like my grandfather's advice that he gave to me when I was like nine and trying to make friends in school. Interested is interesting. Do you want to create good relationships with people? Do you want to be interesting to people and be interested in them? Ask them questions about themselves. Figure out what makes them tick, right? Dig deep and, and build interpersonal relationships. Again, working with difficult personalities. How about networking and persuasion? This sounds seedy, but it's not seedy, okay? Networking and persuasion, the power of persuasion is it's real, okay? And if you want to persuade people to do things the way that you want things to be done, you're gonna have to learn how to persuade people a little bit. And that's not lying to them, that's not manipulating them, but that is communicating clearly, giving constructive feedback, having empathy, being a good listener, realizing that maybe you're not always right. And you can persuade people quite a bit just by being a good listener. Did you know that? You can persuade people to your cause quite a bit by championing them, being interested in them, digging deeper and building interpersonal relationships with them, and then showing that you're an advocate for them that you truly care. You can persuade people. And again, it's not a seedy thing. You're not manipulating people, but you're just pouring into people. And when it comes time for you to say, hey, now I think this thing is valuable, people go, oh, well, you constantly think the things that I want are valuable, so uh, I'm on your side, right? If, if Jesse's always on your side, then maybe sometimes it's time for them to be on Jesse's side, right? That's that's It's a reaping and sowing kind of thing, okay? So um, here's a hard one impossible to ever be fully self-aware. Nobody can be fully self-aware, um, but we can try. 
we can try to stop and ask ourselves questions. Am I, am I aware of what's going on? Am I aware of my body language? Am I aware that I may not always be right here? Stopping and asking and diagnosing, asking yourself questions. I, I would say selling skills, being able to sell, that's a big one, and team building. Here's why selling is important under the guise of, or under the category of teamwork. Um, because sometimes you need to rally your team. Sometimes you need to get them excited about things and you need to be a little bit of a salesman to do it, right? Again, it's not a seedy thing. I'm not asking you to sell people things that they don't need. I'm asking you to get people on board with the vision, right? And so if you have a vision for something, it's a powerful vision, you believe it brings a lot of value to people around you, to the world, then you need to be able to tell them why communication skills, presentation skills, but you're selling them. You're going, man, oh man, you're going to love this. Let's all get on board with this vision. Okay. Um, yeah. So, yep. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So basically introverts like me are screwed. No, Arunava, if you're an introvert, you're not screwed. You're absolutely not. You can be a successful leader, a team member, all of these things. It actually doesn't matter whether or not you are introvert or extrovert. Okay. What matters is you find your way of growing in these soft skills there are ways for everybody i won't speak for an introverts because i'm not an introvert i'm an extrovert and i'm sure there are i'll tell you right now for an extrovert you know it's a difficult challenge for me actively listening and not just waiting for my stinking turn to talk that's a challenge for me that i have to be really self-aware of and go jesse are you listening right now are you actually valuing what people are saying or are you just waiting for your turn to talk shush be quiet jesse listen that's a challenge for me as an extrovert because i want to give give advice talk 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 right instead of listening maybe as an introvert maybe one of your challenges is speaking up or forming relationships maybe that's a difficult thing but i have just like i have to find like how to work around my shortcomings and my insufficiencies to, to, to grow in these soft skills, you also have to, depending on your personality type. So it doesn't matter introvert or extrovert, okay? Um, so, okay, that's good. So yes, that's teamwork. We're gonna answer a quick question with, from Craig Wells, which is, um, Jesse Showalter, do you ever suffer with imposter syndrome? And if so, how do you deal with it? Oh my man, I suffer with imposter syndrome all the time, all the time. Okay. <laughs> and I've done, I, I think I'm doing a whole entire video about this soon. So I won't, I won't, I won't like bore you with it just to release a video in the next week or so about it. But let me, um, let me give you a couple of tips on how I deal with it. Number one, uh, I do what's called uh, stop thinking and positive like feedback on myself. So uh, it's something that I learned uh, through counseling a while ago, which is like, hey, there are times when you feel like something, like you feel internally like you're not enough, right? You have, we call it imposter syndrome now, but back in the day, they just used to call it low self-esteem. You're facing a low self-esteem moment. I'm not good enough. I can't, yada, yada, yada. There's a time when verbally, I'll just go, stop, stop acting like that. Don't act like that. And then I have to attach my thought process onto something that's greater than myself, right? And so for me, I believe my value does not come from how many people follow me on social media. My value does not come from my design work or what's in my portfolio. My value does not come from my job or how much income I make. My value doesn't come from my wife or my children. I believe that my value is something that's innately woven into me by God. And if that's the case, then it can't be taken away from me. That's just what I believe. And so I latch my thought process on to the thing that's not of this world, the thing that can't be taken away from me. And that's abstracted away from all of my stinking thinking and all of my negative thought process i go stop thinking like that i'm not thinking like that right now because my value is somewhere else it's not here so that's something that i do that's a big thing for me here's another thing that i do i gather people around me that will speak life over me and into me okay here's what i mean by that um i don't surround myself with negative people and you know what when i when i, I encounter negative comments online I don't even read them. You know what I think is hilarious about that? There, I Sometimes I read them because I'll, I'll gather and collect some of them and I think some of them are funny. So I'll collect some of them and I'll save them and I'll do a video. I did a video a while ago, like me responding to negative uh, comments on YouTube with my wife and it was hilarious. We just had a great time doing it. But 99% of the time, I don't even look at them. You know what I think is funny about that? People spend time and energy hating on me online, telling me that I look stupid, telling me that I don't know what I'm talking about, telling me that I'm not worthy. And they put time and energy into it. And I don't even put time and energy into reading them. 
<laughs> which I think is great because they've just wasted their time being negative. And I don't waste my time being negative. And I surround myself with people that are positive, not to lie to me, but to pour constructive criticism and feedback into my life. And then tell me where I'm wrong lovingly, but then also encourage me and tell me where I'm right. So that's just what I do. So those are a few thoughts, okay, for you. Um, so, hey, think about that, okay? Um, let's go back and let's figure out our final, our final slide of the day, our final point of the day of soft skills, which is personal management, okay? Personal management. Um, I think a lot of times we think about soft skills and a lot of, we've talked a lot about managing other people. We've talked a lot about managing uh, like teams and delegating and all that kind of stuff. But you can't talk about any of that stuff if you don't first talk about yourself, okay? Be very weary of people that tell you to go out and change the world, but are not willing to first change themselves. That's a, I mean, I'm gonna say that again. Be very weary of people that tell you to go out and change the world, right? Without first making their own bed, cleaning up their own house and their own issues and managing themselves. This is a huge, in my, in my opinion, the biggest part of soft skills is managing your own person. Here's a couple hard ones that are hard hitting. They hit home for a lot of us, okay? Um, time management. I didn't spell management right. I spelled it time megament, but it should say time management, okay? Managing your time. Um, here's some questions. Here's some hard questions. Let's get very real at the end of the stream, shall we? Um, do you goof off when you shouldn't be goofing off? Do you know how to get on task and stay on task? Do you know how to turn off notifications and focus and not swipe on Instagram when you should be working? Because here's the thing. If you're a full-time employee and you're swiping on Instagram, you're wasting your employees' time. You're stealing money from them. And if you're working freelance and you're goofing off, you're procrastinating and you're putting stress on yourself, it's just, there's a lot. This is when you read job descriptions and they're like, we need somebody who has good time management. You don't get to just read over that and go, yeah, everybody has that. No, no, no. It might be a skill that you actually need to work at, okay? It might be something you go, ooh, I'm not actually very good at managing my time. I procrastinate, I wait till the last minute, I goof off, I get distracted easily, um, I, you know, I wander online. For people who have struggles with that, working remote can be very difficult because you can really struggle with accomplishing the things you need to do while still being an honest person, right? So time management is a huge thing, okay? And that leads right into the next one, work ethic, okay? Do you have a good work ethic? Do you know what it is to put in a hard day's work? If not, you need to learn what a good work ethic is. You need to start establishing a good work ethic in your life. I, I know some people that have amazing work ethics. My wife has an amazing work ethic. She'll, she'll wake up in the morning, start working, and then she'll lay her head down on the pillow at night tired from working so hard with the children or doing stuff like she does photography or projects around the house. She works. And then I know some people who are entitled and don't think that they need to work. They think that life owes them something. And so they don't work hard. And you know what? Um, that lack of work ethic will show. It will catch up to you. And it will be brought into the light. And people will start to realize it. So do you have a good work ethic? Okay. Here's the next one. Um, do you have follow through? And I'll pair this with, are you detail oriented? See, a lot of us love that initial push, right? With that initial concept, that thought, we love being create creative, but do we also follow through, get down to the nitty gritty, be detail oriented, follow up on it and see where it's going, pursue it, progress with it. Can we hold on to it till the end? There's a difference between getting on a bull and riding that bull and staying on that bull for all eight seconds, isn't there? So the mind game, the initial mountain that you have to get across is getting on the bull. But then once you're on the bull, what do you got to do? You got to ride that sucker. You got to stay on to the end and do your due diligence and follow through, right? It's not enough to say, hey, hey, client, I would love to do this thing. I'll email you tomorrow. Do you follow through and actually send the email when you said you would? 
right? That's being a person of character that's following through. So if you if you have trouble with that skill, if you lack in that skill set, you need to figure out, and again, I don't have all the answers for you today. You might just need to Google something, read a book, watch a video, take a course, right? Get a coach or a mentor. If you're interested, I do mentorships on Superpeer. So you could you could follow the link in the description, follow me on social media, follow me on superpeer.com slash Jesse Showalter and get a, a, a manager or a, a, a mentorship time with me and I'll talk with you about your, your issues. I don't just talk to you about design stuff, I'll talk with you about character stuff, but maybe you need a coach on how to figure out how to be detail oriented and follow through. Here's another one, being self-motivated, right? And I, I'm just gonna pair honesty with it. Be honest about it. Are you actually self-motivated? When we read job descriptions that say self-starter, do you read over and go, eh, everybody else is? Nuh-uh, not all people. Some people don't know how to self-start. Some people need to be told, hey, wake up. Hey, get to work. Why are you goofing off? Why are you messing around? Why are you taking so much time drinking coffee? Hey, get back to work. Some people aren't self-starters, right? Self-starters are the people that say, I have an idea and I'm not gonna wait around for anybody to bring this idea to fruition. That's a self-starter. That's the entrepreneurial, I can't even say that word, entrepreneurial spirit, which says, I have a good idea. I want to bring something into the world. And you don't have to just be a freelancer or an entrepreneur to do it. You could be working in a team full-time like Saral, who just got his new full-time job. You could say, I have a great idea. What's the, the, the self-motivating kind of spirit, the self-starting spirit? Is Saral saying, I have a great idea that could benefit my work culture or my office or my product. And so in my spare time, I'm gonna whip up this idea, build a presentation. I'm gonna take the initiative and present it to my manager or my team. And they're gonna go, wow, when did you do this? On my own time, because I'm that motivated. Wow, you're a self-starter, you're motivated. That's different than somebody going, well, I'm, I'm waiting around for somebody to give me a raise, right? Earn your raise, prove your worth because you're a self-starter, okay? Here's, here's the last few and then we're done. Being others-minded, okay? Being, let's, well, we gotta talk about that. Here's a personal management issue with a lot of us is we think we are the most important thing in the world. We think that the sun revolves around us and it doesn't. Right? So being others minded, considering other people more important than yourself is a character trait, a way that we live out life that only benefits, blesses, and brings flourishing to everybody around us in our sphere of influence. Okay? And so we are others minded. That's a hard thing. So many of us are us minded, but there's, you know it. There's a big difference between somebody in your office or somebody in your life who's, who's willing to say, Hey, how are you doing today? Like, what's going on with you? Hey, uh, actually, I think so-and-so has uh, like an idea. I'd love to hear what she has to say. Can we just take a second and hear from her? Now you're, you're not waiting for your turn to talk. You're interested in others. You're being a leader. Hey, you're being a leader when you do it. Just saying, here's the last one, okay? Realistic, be realistic, okay? Um, here's what I mean by this. Be realistic about your time. Be realistic about your skill set. Be realistic about your abilities. Be realistic about your shortcomings, okay? Be realistic. So let's break this down, be really practical. Don't say to a client, um, I really, really want this project, so I promise you that I can get it done in the next three days. Can you? Can you though? Do you usually get projects done like this in three days? Is that common for you or is it more like three weeks? Because don't say three days because you want to impress. Be realistic because if you're realistic, you won't tick people off later when you're late, right? There have been lots of times in my life when I'm unrealistic. No, it's fine. I'm sure I can. I'm sure I can do that really, really quick. Nope, can't. Or, um, or uh, you know, I've never done that type of work before, but I'm sure I could. I could. No problem. And then you struggle and you strain because you don't know how to do that thing. And now you're stressed. You've brought anxiety into your life. It's not a bad idea to challenge yourself, but be realistic. Maybe say instead, you know, I've never done it before. I'd love to give it a try. So therefore I'd give you a discount if you give me extended amounts of time to figure this out because it's something I really want to learn. That's realistic. Not realistic is I can accomplish anything in the shortest amount of time. That's not, okay? So be realistic. Um, it's, a, it's an okay thing to face your shortcomings, okay? to call them out internally, to work on them. This is how we grow and improve as people, okay? So I think uh, 
Yeah. Oh, J uh, Jan brought up a great article. I love this article, Maker versus Manager. It's a great article about how you should uh, kind of manage your time. So let me give you the gist of the Maker versus Manager schedule. Makers need long periods of time, okay? Long periods of time, big blocks of time to create, to design, to think through things. Managers usually need shorter snippets of time and they can multitask and email this and check that notification and talk to this person. And so um, if you are a maker, if you're a creator, you can't be interrupted every 30 minutes because it disrupts your flow, okay? And if you're a manager, like, so there's, if, if you're a freelancer, you have to do both. So you have to manage your time and say, hey, I'm gonna spend the next three hours doing some maker stuff. And then as a business person or an entrepreneur, I'm gonna spend the next hour like, maybe taking calls, doing meetings, answering emails. That's real sporadic, right? But you can't do both because it, it it jumps you off of that momentum. It's bad flow, okay? So it's a lot of starting and stopping. So, okay. Well, hey, I hope you guys uh, have enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, make sure to, you know, like the video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe on whatever platform you're watching this on. We got some people watching uh, on YouTube, on Twitch, on Facebook, on Behance. So, you know, just make sure you are uh, uh, following along because I do a live stream just about every single Friday. Um, and I'm starting to do a lot of Thursday night kind of casual streams where I just kind of cruise the internet and look at creative stuff, try to find inspiration, okay? Um, so I would love that. Also, if you are not yet one of my members, become a YouTube member because next week, that's right, next week I'll be releasing or I'll be hosting another members only video hangout. Uh, I did it last week. It was a blast. We had like 12 people, 10 or 12 people in the chat. Uh, we talked about life and design and critiqued portfolios and gave feedback as a team. We might be starting a new uh, Slack or Discord channel where my members can be a part of. And we are all also able to do a little role play with one of my uh, with one of my members where I role played as his client and kind of prepared him for his next client meeting, which was super fun. So just hit that little join button. Uh, become a member, a supporter, an insider, and then check the community tab for updates, behind the scenes, all that kind of stuff. I think uh, I, I might be releasing soon a behind the scenes office tour of how I do my videos and how all my setup and all my gear and stuff like that. So, you know, sign up to be a member. Man, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream today. I'm having such technical difficulties that I'm not able to do those portfolio reviews today. But... Since I can't, and I promise portfolio reviews, what I will do is I'll figure out my portfolio review situation, and I will probably do an extra stream next week, earlier in the week, uh, where I will review some of these streams that were submitted on Instagram. So feel free, submit your stuff on Instagram still, and I'll come back next week with like an impromptu surprise stream uh, where I'll, I will review portfolios. Also, also really big announcement. I'm actually going to be hosting a design challenge soon where we kind of do like a bracketed design tournament and uh, it's going to be uh, like sponsored. There's going to be prizes. You're going to be able to win year subscriptions to Adobe CC like like subscriptions. There's going to be all sorts of cool prizes and stuff like that. So I'm really, <laughs> I'm really excited about it. So um, stay tuned for news about that. If you're not uh, if you are not signed up for my newsletter, sign up for my newsletter. If you don't follow me on social media, follow me on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter and stuff like that so you can get all the updates. But it's going to be a really cool design tournament where people can enter and, and face off with each other. And uh, it's going to be really, really cool. So I'm excited about that. Lots of cool announcements. And also, definitely sign up for my newsletter because I have some really cool announcements about things that other things that I'm releasing as well. I can't fully talk about them yet, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, thank you, everybody, for watching on the live stream. That's going to be it for the day. Uh, I hope to see you guys right back here, same time, same place, next week, uh, where we're going to be having a live stream. Ooh, what's the topic of the live stream next week? It's going to be about personal branding next week. So join me then. It's going to be a ton of fun. We will see you then. Take care.